confirmed they were investigating a pier for drug offences and had searched a property shortly before pictures emerged of officers, one carrying a battering ram, another leading a sniffer dog, entering the Dolphin Square Flats in Westminster. It was there Lord Sewell was pictured allegedly using cocaine in the company of prostitutes. After a day of calls for him to resign from the House of Lords, he told officials in Parliament that he would take a leave of absence and would not return until the investigations into his conduct were complete. The peers made no comment so far to the media. The United States says it's holding talks with Turkey about intensifying attacks against Islamic State militants in northern Syria. Last week, Ankara agreed to allow American jets to use Turkish bases for operations against IS. The State Department official has told this program that the U.S. wants to create an area in northern Syria free of IS militants. Our Washington correspondent Gary O'Donoghue reports. Defense Department officials are resisting calling it a safe zone, insisting that there are a number of ink blots on the map, as they put it, where IS is not present and that they want to see grow. One thing they are clear on, however, is that there is no deal to impose a no-fly area in northern Syria, which Turkey has long argued for, and which it believes would slow the exodus of refugees across the border. Asked about Turkish attacks on Kurdish groups, such as the PKK in northern Iraq, a spokesman, Jeff Davis, said Turkey had a right to defend itself, though he declined to comment on reports of other attacks on Kurdish fighters in northern Syria. The US has lobbied Turkey hard for months to get the use of air bases for the fight against IS, and it's clear Turkey means to exact a price for its cooperation. One of the main suspects in the murder of the former Russian agent, Alexander Litvinenko, has declined to give evidence to the inquiry into his death. Dmitry Kovtun had been due to appear today. He told the BBC in Moscow that he was worried he might be breaking Russian laws if he did so. He's one of two men the British authorities suspect of poisoning Mr. Litvinenko with radioactive polonium at the London Hotel nine years ago. The chairman of the inquiry said he had the gravest suspicions that Dmitry Kovtun was trying to manipulate the hearing. David Cameron says he's prepared to take military action in Libya if there's a direct threat to Britain. He was speaking after meeting the president of Indonesia in Jakarta. Indonesia, like Britain, has seen hundreds of its people leave to fight with Islamic State militants in Syria and Iraq. Concerns growing that IS is gaining ground in Libya, the Prime Minister said he was ready to use force if there was a direct threat. With respect to uh, Libya, or indeed with respect to anywhere else, if there is a plot underway where I believe British citizens are in danger of being targeted, if it's possible to take action to stop that, I would. That is legal, that is right, that is proper, and that's the role of the Prime Minister. Companies which provide care for people in their own homes are warning that the introduction of the national living wage could lead to what they call a catastrophic failure in the support of old and vulnerable people. In an open letter to the Chancellor George Osborne, the UK Home Care Association says firms cannot afford to pay the increase in wages unless local authorities, which is 70% of their business, pay more. Engine operating temperature has been reached. With more of us living longer, care which helps older people remain in their own home is vital. Many of the staff who provide that support are on the minimum wage of £6.50 an hour. The new national living wage will increase pay for over 25s to £9 an hour by 2020. Home care providers welcome that, but warn many companies will go past or refuse to take council clients unless cash-strapped local authorities start paying them more. In response, the government says hundreds of thousands will benefit from the national living wage and overall social care costs will be considered at the next spending review. A woman has been found guilty of being at the centre of a paedophile ring which abused five young children during more than a decade. Marie Black, who's from Norwich, was convicted of 23 offences, including rape and organising the rape of children. Two other people were convicted of abusing boys and girls. Another was found guilty of assault. Six other defendants were cleared of all charges. Angus Crawford reports. The court heard that Marie Black, who's 34, had been instrumental in using the five children as sexual playthings. They'd been taken to houses in Norfolk and London. At times, she organised parties and card games 
to decide who would abuse them first. Giving evidence anonymously, the victim said the attacks became so routine they thought it was normal. Black was found guilty of 23 offences, including rape and inciting a child to engage in sexual activity. Jason Adams, also from Norwich, and Michael Rogers from Romford in Essex were together convicted of 27 similar counts. There have been falls in many stock markets around the world after shares in China suffered their biggest one-day drop in eight years. The main index in Shanghai dropped more than 8%, despite recent efforts by the government to support the market. Analysts say it was triggered by weak economic data and a general lack of confidence in the government's measures. The authorities in Zimbabwe are trying to track down a tourist who killed one of the country's most famous lions. The man, who's believed to be Spanish, paid around £34,000 to hunt the animal, affectionately known as Cecil. Thank you, Corey. You're listening to The World Tonight with Ruth Shah. Turkey has been a reluctant but crucial player in the war that's unfolded in Syria. The two countries share a long border, which has been crossed by more than 1.8 million refugees. Now, a deal between the US and Turkey to create a safe zone along part of that border could prove to be a significant factor in the battle against so-called Islamic State. The BBC's correspondent Mark Lowen is in Istanbul. He outlined what's been agreed. Well, I've spoken to Turkish officials here who spoke on the condition of anonymity, who said that this safe zone that will be created or was in the process of being created and is already in place in some areas, is in effect an area to protect moderate opposition forces in Syria who are being trained by coalition forces. Therefore, some kind of buffer area which will be patrolled uh, by coalition jets. And now when I asked whether that would be US or Turkish jets, they said, well, any member of the coalition that wishes to do so. But the aim is really to provide a kind of safe area for these moderates to be trained in. And it will be a sort of IS-free zone, as it was put, i.e. it will be clear of the jihadist militants. But uh, the slight problem with that is that some of the areas the zone could include are some Syrian Kurdish villages in northern Syria. And if Turkish jets start trying to come in to control Syrian Kurdish villages, there's likely probably to be some kind of exchange of fire between the two. So it's not clear cut yet, and uh, I think that there are potentially quite a few stumbling blocks on the way. So why do you think this is a deal that has emerged now? Turkey's long wanted some kind of buffer zone, um, or safe zone, call it what you may. Why now? I think that this is what has formed the crux of negotiations between Washington and Ankara over the last few months. There have been several visits here to Turkey by General John Allen, uh, the White House envoy for the fight against so-called Islamic State. And initially, Turkey wanted the declaration of a classic no-fly zone, uh, so that if Syrian regime jets, i.e. Assad forces jets, come into that no-fly zone, they would be taken down, along with any sort of IS militants or any other militant group. Uh, the compromise, I think, that has been found is that it is not going to be a classic no-fly zone. It will not be classified as a no-fly zone. It will be a safe area of sorts and a bit of a patchwork area that will be close to the Turkish border and uh, will allow Turkey to feel a bit more secure um, and will allow these moderate opposition forces to be trained and therefore has allowed Turkey to go in in the fight against IS and, and fulfil one of the conditions that it wanted fulfilled before Turkey took part militarily in the coalition. Mark Lowen. But Turkey isn't only fighting IS, it's also battling the Kurds. There are Kurds in Turkey, Syria and Iraq, all of whom would like more autonomy. So Ankara's agreement with Washington comes as one Kurdish group involved in the fight against IS militants in Syria has accused Ankara of repeatedly attacking its forces near the border. The Kurdish People's Protection Units, or YPG, says Turkish tanks shelled its fighters near Kobane in northern Syria. Turkey says it's investigating the claims. The government in, in Ankara, though, does admit that it's launched attacks on Kurdish camps that belong to the PKK. That's an insurgent group which has been fighting in Turkey in a conflict that's killed about 40,000 people since 1984. The strikes on the PKK were prompted by violence last week in which two Turkish police officers were killed. Well, today, the Turkish Foreign Minister, Mevlut Cavusoglu, lumped the PKK and its allies in Syria with IS, also known as Daesh. There is no difference between PKK and Daesh. 
So you cannot say that diet, PKK 